Welcome back, everybody, and uh, Google Developers Live. We're on the Udacity Office Hour show about cr uh, mobile web development, CS256. I'm here with Sean Bennett, course architect from Udacity, Chris Wilson, course instructor and developer advocate at Google, and myself, program manager in the Google Chrome developer relations team. So uh, we didn't get a lot of questions this week, mm -hmm. but um, we're talking today specifically about the responsive images and performance. But um, in the, in I mean, you may as well ask any questions at this point. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're here to answer them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we, we can uh, make that um, the same for the next, the following mm -hmm. two sessions. Yeah. Uh, if you have questions about other parts of the course, don't feel you know, like you yeah. can't ask them on the forum. We have the Dory set up. So mm. if you go to developers.google.com slash live uh, slash Chrome, then you'll find all of the uh, upcoming episodes there, and you can ask questions in the, the Dory at the bottom of those pages. Mm -hmm. So let's dive into it. Um, yeah. Beatrice from Munich mm. is asking, what happens with the <laughs> problem set submissions, Sean? They're marked <laughs> as done after you get the congrats She's specifically message. asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. What's up with no, that, Sean? Yeah. Th thanks, Chris. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, it looks like there, there must be a bug when we, we kind of migrated to a new uh, site framework recently. I don't know if you've noticed the change Frameworks. in look and feel and everything. And yes. Yes. something I didn't looks notice like that. it got, it didn't quite get working. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to talk to the engineers about that and see what, what we can do to fix it. OK. And we can maybe post a, mm -hmm. a reply in the, in the Dory. Yep. OK, good. So. We're on it, uh, Beatrice. <laughs> well, Sean, <laughs> Sean is on it. <laughs> Chris is not touching that. <laughs> and speaking of frameworks, um, <laughs> a hot rock it is. <laughs> even though the class doesn't cover frameworks, uh, says Sarah <coughs> in Colorado, um, Sarah got the floor because she literally just five minutes ago <laughs> asked these questions. So yeah. um, <laughs> great uh, opportunity to ask your questions right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still live. So um, even though the class doesn't cover frameworks, does using a framework such as Bootstrap or Foundation <laughs> uh, tend to increase or decrease performance? I think you know before the show we were, we were talking <laughs> about this question, <laughs> and we thought maybe we could each answer all at once, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure we'd have at least three different answers. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think despite the it. fact <laughs> that there are two options. <laughs> no, no. I'd, uh, I'm three I'm at out, least. I'm an yeah. out of the box thinker. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think the the short <laughs> answer, such as it is, um, it really depends how carefully you use the framework. It's mm -hmm. certainly, I think, if you look at Bootstrap or Foundation or Angular or any of the frameworks out there, you know, the people who write these are not slouches mm -hmm. at programming. They yeah. know what they're doing, mm -hmm. and they do write very efficiently in, in general. At the same time, it's definitely possible to use frameworks in a very inefficient mm -hmm. way. Um, certainly, I think we got into that pattern with mm -hmm. jQuery for a long yeah. time, mm -hmm. where a lot of developers would Leap on programming in JavaScript, and they would, you know, the first thing they would do is include jQuery, and then everything was dollar sign something, mm -hmm. dollar sign something, like yeah. the same thing over and over and over again, and um, not the most efficient way <laughs> to yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. write code. So I think if you're going to, um, if you're really interested in performance, which I think we all mm -hmm. should be, you should th um, very carefully look at how the framework is intending you to work and make sure that mm -hmm. you're doing that. And then I think you'll find it probably, you know, it's it, it's kind of rude to say it increases performance because that presumes you would write very bad code otherwise. <laughs> I would hope not, but I think that it certainly is not going to be a, a mm -hmm. you know cause performance degradation mm -hmm. to use a framework. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, good point. No, that yeah. was a good answer. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we have an answer. Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, not all at once. In, but yeah. You know, intelligent <laughs> use I think uh, tends to at least. At least keep performance as good as you could make it. Mm -hmm. Well, and also um, to see like how many pieces you need from it. Yeah, uh, right? absolutely. Like, yeah. And that that can be a big mm -hmm. a big right. problem is yeah. if you take a big framework right. and you're mm -hmm. pulling the whole thing down. Like people mm -hmm. who literally, yep. you know, I, I kind of got away from using jQuery, and then finally I thought it through, and it's like, well, They're, the only thing yeah. that I ever want jQuery for is I like that you know dollar sign rather mm -hmm. than having to type out every time you know right. yeah. document dot get element by ID and mm -hmm. you know if I aliased that I was done I just had to be very intelligent about how I used that yeah. alias yeah, yeah exactly it was yeah. fine and and a lot of 
frameworks have kind of like a light version exactly. that you can use. Yes. Like jQuery yes. Lite has, I think, that and what their their event syntax, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's about it. Yeah. Um, and those are generally the pieces that I want. Yeah, so. uh, I think too <laughs> with with JavaScript loaders, it's less of a problem than it mm -hmm. used to be, but yeah. still. Mm -hmm something to keep in mind and pay mm -hmm. attention to. Yeah. yeah, and using the proper minification, yeah. all mm -hmm. of that. I mean, obviously, you don't want to well. be loading all of these resources separately. Right. And yeah. mm -hmm. you know, typ typical stuff that you already probably know how to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, so next question uh, from Yan Wei in New York. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the Chrome DevTools, there's a save to har for all uh, in mm -hmm. the context menu. Uh, is there any command line option to automate this? So I actually did a little bit of looking into this. I asked uh, Ilya Grigoric, and I posted a couple of links in the answer already, Yanwei. Uh, one of the things is um, we actually did a show on Google Developers Live uh, about a year ago. Uh, it was called the Har Show <laughs> with, with <laughs> Har Har. <laughs> I totally want to yeah. do this. Session yeah. called the hard. <laughs> <laughs> you can't <laughs> resist. Mm -hmm. um, so Ilya Grigoric, uh, make the web fast. Uh, he did this uh, show. I posted a link to it, mm -hmm. and he put a bunch of resources in there. Um, I checked with him. He didn't know about an option to run it from the command line, but uh, posted a few links there that hopefully uh, might help you out. So there you go. Um, Next question from Sarah again. Is there an overall checklist of sorts that can be followed to ensure or evaluate performance throughout the project? I think a great question. Oh, wow. It is a great question. Um, first, yeah. th first thing no. that comes <laughs> <to> <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, th there, are, there are things that you can do. Yeah. There are things that you can do. For example, um, <laughs> page speed. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at performance, mm -hmm. yeah. page speed is a great tool to run your apps through and get you get a score, right? So you can install that. Uh, you get a score, see exactly the the things that are coming out bad, mm -hmm. and then has a instructions on how to fix that. There's also, and this is pretty new, uh, PageSpeed Insights that basically tells you how mobile ready your mm -hmm. projects are. Uh, definitely check those two out. I think. Mm -hmm. Those would be my yeah. first yeah. places yeah, I mean, to I go. Yeah, I think PageSpeed really is, is an incredible right. uh, mm -hmm. evaluator to right. use as you go along. I think you know a checklist to ensure performance as you go. That, that's um, yeah, right. That's it's harder. either so high level that it's it, it's directive and not really a checklist, or mm -hmm. there would be so many things on it. Yeah. Um, well, and those things are really constantly changing too. I mean, as true, browsers true. change, and depending on what browsers you target, it's. It's it's hard to have like a single checklist mm -hmm. that you can go through. Um, I mean, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the the perf matters people would probably say use tools, yeah. not mm -hmm. rules. Unfortunately, that's th there's no hard and fast rule. But I think PageSpeed and PageSpeed Insight can get to a good way there. Really good tools to mm -hmm. use, and they're updated often enough yeah. that as things change, right. that's that's. Right. Definitely a very good. Yeah, we're putting point. a lot of effort behind yeah. these. These are not stale mm -hmm. links that mm -hmm. you go to. These are like very actively being developed. So mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. and two, I mean, it's definitely important to simply run the dev tools all the time, profile your mm -hmm. code all yeah. the time, mm -hmm. and understand where your performance is going and what's taking, mm -hmm. you know, right. what's taking your your yeah. time. What's what's worth optimizing? Yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yes. And yeah, you know, not to. Um, make it sound vain or something, but the course lesson on performance, we really laid it out. We, we put the structure in place to kind of cover the most important mm -hmm. bits yeah, and pieces. things that, that are yeah, kind of true across watch. the board. So, I mean, and it's mm -hmm. not a checklist, but yeah. following the, the high level topics there, mm -hmm. I think gets you an idea. Right? Yeah. So. yeah, I think Colt even specifically says, follow the memory, always follow mm -hmm. the memory. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a great like high level concept to keep in mind when you're um, yes. dealing with performance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perf matters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next question is from Craig in Maine. Um, what's the best practice for text sizes? M's, percent, pixel? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Um, um. <laughs> so I think you'll find that percent uh, at the top level. Percent is the most flexible, meaning it's going to change on you the most. If you set your mm -hmm. text size in percent and on the body, mm -hmm. and it's just coming from you know in its inherited size, you will find odd effects happen sometimes. Like you know, I think I mentioned this during the course on an iPad. If you don't 
set the initial scale and you rotate, then the text size actually changes. Yeah. Um, the size doesn't change, but the text size does. It's really kind of bizarre. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I think that uh, M's are sort of the same thing. They're off of the inherited size, so they're, mm. they're, they're going to change mm. if your inherited size changes. Mm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know, pixels are not actually so bad anymore because they're not really pixels. Right. They're, they're this weird... Um, at least two layers deep of, deep of abstraction from an actual pixel. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that means they're just this arbitrary unit that's kind of about a 96 DPI pixel held at arm's length mm -hmm. size, and it's just a convenient unit. Um, but it's not necessarily exactly one pixel. It's probably an, an alias, you know, integer multiple of a pixel, but that's a, the best mm -hmm. you're going to mm -hmm. get. Um, usually in text sizes, I tend to think in points anyway, so I frequently will use points, um, or I'll use pixels if I'm trying to line up next to an image or something mm -hmm. like that that I want to be in a multiple. Um, yeah, th there's not a <laughs> don't do this because it's horrendously bad, other than understanding that m's are percents. If you use them from the top, they're going to change. The best thing probably to do is define the top level yourself in a fixed unit and then use m's or percent mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. scale from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That book from Ethan Marcotte. Um, oh. There's a great mm -hmm. old yeah. chapter about. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and it's also good to look at best practices around like reset style sheets um, and right. using them yeah. to yeah. 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 to right. firmly <laughs> fix the size of everything. And I think right. that's probably where you're going to get the, the best answer yeah. for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, perfect. All right. So we have another framework related question yeah. from Alper. Uh, if the objective <coughs> is to create a mobile app to be packaged yeah. with PhoneGap. Mm -hmm. How would your recommendations change from what we just discussed? Uh, for example, zooming in and out may not be relevant in a mobile app. Oh, okay. Good question, yeah. indeed. And, and first <coughs> of all, let me say, don't, mm -hmm. don't you don't need to apologize for asking another framework <laughs> question. <laughs> right. um, whatever questions you have, please ask all them. questions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to, to, to be really clear, we're not anti-framework. It's not. You should never use frameworks. This mm -hmm. course was really right. intended to try to ground. Uh, developers in what was happening underneath the framework layer. Mm -hmm. So then you can understand how to use it exactly. if you were using and, a framework. And what the framework's doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think uh, you know, zooming in and out being relevant on a mobile app, it, it's really, um, it's true that you get a different user experience from the top level using PhoneGap or another packaging mechanism, but that doesn't really mean that most of these recommendations change in, in mm -hmm. any drastic way. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, if you're writing something that's going to be full screen, there's no address bar, there's no question of it, you know, not having, owning all of the space, you, you may actually be able to say, you know what, I'm going to disable zooming. Mm -hmm. um, there are certainly a lot of scenarios where it's OK to say, no, I don't want the user to s be able to scale this, as long as you take into account things like, mm -hmm. you know, if they really can't read my tiny little text, that's sort of a problem. Mm -hmm. So um, in general, I don't think, I'm trying to think through everything we said in the course, which mm -hmm. is obviously quite a lot. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything that just doesn't apply. Yeah, I mean. Inside a I mean, most of package. it, I would say, still applies quite well. I mean, phone gap really doesn't mitigate understanding of basic web development practices, no, I wouldn't think. No. And a lot of Certainly what we not. say is is built on just you know extending that to mobile. Yeah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. okay. So I guess mm -hmm. in short. Don't <laughs> okay. um, so Lello in Colorado. What other course can I take to improve Ooh. on mobile web development? Oh. Where in this part two coming out? Yeah. <laughs> um, so well. I, I, I think the part of the point with making this course is that there weren't a whole lot of good resources right. that you were, were just like a course that were all packaged together in something mm -hmm. um, that you could understand all in one place. So uh, one answer to that might be there there isn't any right now, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, having I said that. I heard you're doing more courses, though. And I, I I'm sure that's one of the 58. I, I 58 more. Something about right. that, yeah. Um, yeah. We're just going to leave that alone. <laughs> That's yeah, probably so one of the it's 50. Definitely something <laughs> we want to uh, get a jump on, but yeah. I mean, we don't have mm -hmm. anything right now. I mean, 
I mean, there are a lot of resources that you can l that you can look at that you know are kind of scattered all over the place. Um, not not so much like a single mm -hmm. course. We um, if you take a look in the materials in the wiki um, section of the course, then we've got a whole list of links to external resources, HTML5 rocks articles, mm -hmm. right. uh, GDL sessions. Uh, right. I think we've got some HTML5 DevConf I mean, stuff in there. I would say though <laughs> that even though it's not specific to mobile, mm -hmm. uh, there are some great mob uh, web development yeah. courses. So there's the mm -hmm. CS255, mm -hmm. 253. Yeah. Uh, some of the concepts there, of course, easily yeah, uh, go I mean, over to a mobile web mm -hmm. development, especially some of the back end stuff mm -hmm. doesn't change at all. Yeah, right. um, I mean, in 255, it kind of introduces the right. concept of a sprite sheet, which is something yeah. you're mm -hmm. seeing more and more people use well, to anything, optimize images. Anything that Colt talks about will be Applicable Brilliant. to mobile because well, <laughs> <laughs> it's the don't so much don't, performance. Don't, focused. don't let him hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, he's not going to watch this anyway. Perfect matter. Yeah, so I mean, hopefully the, we'll be building more. Yeah. yeah. The the other thing that I will say too is there's no no replacement for experience, and what mm -hmm. you should really do is pick some projects you want to mm -hmm. play around with and build them as mobile web apps. Um, Mm -hmm. Then yes. after you've done this a few times, yeah. go back and review the lessons that mm -hmm. I in this course mm -hmm. and think through how these apply now that you've got some experience. Yeah. And I think that will um, mm -hmm. that's going to help you improve more yeah. than anything. I certainly mm -hmm. I improve more by doing <laughs> than yeah. by, yeah. Know, Absolutely. by learning. Yeah. And I mean, one one really useful thing is while you're making these these apps, while you're building these projects, you know, just keep a Keep a running tally of where are the pain points or the things that I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep a che keep a checklist or something of things to watch out for. You know, build yeah. your own checklist yeah. of things that you've had problems with in the past and you need to remember. Okay. Or if there's something that seems like I completely don't understand this part, mm -hmm. like why do I care about you know how often I ping the network or something? Mm -hmm. You know, write that down mm -hmm. and come back to it later after yeah. you've you know played around with other yeah. things or and see. Ask it in the next office hours. Or ask yeah. it in the next <laughs> office hours. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, we are already down to the last question uh, mm -hmm. from Lalo in Colorado Oops. again. Unless we get some more. Unless they come in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We've said that before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, mm -hmm. is there a free alternative to Impact JS? Do you I know Impact JS? I, yeah, I, I do. Yeah, but, but so uh, uh, Impact JS is a game engine. Right, um, it's a fantastic game mm -hmm. engine. Yes, it's um, a fantastic game engine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's like a head-to-head -head comparison. Mm -hmm. um, two things I would point you to. Uh, one, my favorite graphics engine is 3JS. Oh, yeah. so I have to mention that. <laughs> uh, HTML5GameEngine.com actually mm -hmm. is a nice comparison chart yeah. of different game engines. Mm -hmm what their licensing is and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So you might start there and mm -hmm. html5gameengine.com. Yeah. Um, yeah, and depending on if you need a full game engine or just smaller exactly. pieces of one, you might exactly. look at other things as well. Um, Box2D mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Really awesome. Seaport. <laughs> <laughs> right. So many. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So, mm. well, with that, I think we're down to the last question, um, or that was the last question. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Darn, I'm not seeing oh, yeah, one. one. <laughs> so, um, we'll, again, we'll be back next week, same time. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Chris will be on a beach in Maui. <laughs> <laughs> Some <laughs> people. <laughs> Some people. I know it's a rough life. <laughs> So uh, it'll just be Sean and myself okay, uh, yeah. here <laughs> in the studio. Um, so ask your questions about the next lessons, eight and nine. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have questions about any of the other lessons, feel free to ask those as yeah. well. Uh, or mobile web dev in general. Yeah, yeah sure. Right. Sure, any mm -hmm. of the questions you have. Mm -hmm. um, these uh, GDL shows, they're recorded. Uh, they're live. And as soon as they're done, uh, they're available in recorded form at the same URL on developers.google.com slash live. So with that, thanks, Chris, Sean, and see you next week. Yeah, thanks, Peter. See you guys. See ya.